become a firefighter, your learning does not stop. Right now we're at Tarrant County College's uh, Northwest Campus, their fire training facility. Well, this is an example of a response that you would use for a large-scale disaster, be it weather-related tornadoes, hurricane, or man-made disasters. When a building collapse happens, how do we go in and effect a rescue? That person that's trapped inside that building, how fast do you want somebody to be able to get to you? You want the best equipped, best trained people coming for you. Uh, to pull you out of that down structure, and this is the type of training that is required. They're learning uh, three specific disciplines. We do lifting and moving evolutions for heavy objects, reaching and breaking, cutting holes in wood, metal, and concrete surfaces, and then our third evolution is a shoring operation, bracing up broken buildings. We make our inspection hole, and that kind of lets us know what's going to happen next. We use a camera to send through the hole if we have a victim on the other side of that wall, we go in and, and actually drill a bunch of small holes, basically turning an area that we're going to breach into Swiss cheese. And then we come in with smaller chippers and chip those areas out. If we don't have a victim on the other side or they're further away from that or we can get the victim moved out of the way, we'll bring in bigger breakers. So the bigger the tool, the harder it hits, the faster we can get through that concrete. You need to get a person to emergency care within an hour for them to have the best chance of surviving. When you put that injured person in a down structure, time becomes that much more critical. I don't want to be inside of a structure and have to come back out to get a different tool because that tool didn't work for me. We talk about efficiency a lot, but really out here what we're looking for is sufficiency. Is the tool going to be sufficient? In other words, is it going to do what we need it to do? Core drills for accessing spaces for observation purposes, chipping hammers, jack hammers, drills, cutting torches, gas power saws, or cutting concrete. Variety as far as the hammer drills where I have a chipping aspect as well as a drilling aspect become very valuable so that way I can take one tool in and multiple bits and use it for different applications. It doesn't take a lot of maintenance. The bits or the blades last a long time. That's one thing we're looking for. As far as the Hilties, I've found that they've been a great tool to use. They've all been reliable. We don't have any of the ongoing maintenance issues some other tools may present. We enjoy working with power tools, being able to use that tool to do something we don't do on an everyday basis. These people, after that 80 to 90 hours of hands-on experience with uh, real concrete, real steel, and real tools, have a pretty good grasp of uh, tool operation, maintenance, field uh, evolutions, that type of thing. Whenever you have an event, be it weather-related, or an accident, or an intentional devastating act, your local resources, your fire rescue resources, need to be trained and prepared to perform these rescues. It's very enriching. I love it. <laughs> I love being a fireman. I don't see myself doing anything else.